So we have to remember love is not this kind of pain. Love is not toxic. Love is acceptance. Accept your love is based. So when you're trauma bonded, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to, you've got to come to realizations for yourself and come to acceptance that what you're experiencing with this person is not healthy love and accept that your love is based on a toxic cycle. Understand what's happening. That doesn't invalidate your feelings. That doesn't invalidate your life. What it does is gets you to see another, another side of things that can help you free yourself from this. So there's a lot of grief that comes from letting go from a toxic person. And this is partially why we have to understand that our love that we felt wasn't even a healthy thing for us. And yet there's pieces of it that are. Does that make sense? Because you fell in love with the love bombing version, the idealized version of the toxic narcissist, right? And so there's that in combination with all of this, the manipulation to stay, okay, with something so toxic. So we have to stop chasing the fantasy of potential. When you're trying to break trauma bonds, you have to stop chasing that fantasy of the potential of the other person to be the thing they were in the beginning, to be the person who you know they can be because they've shown you they can be. It's, it's a lot of work to get through this, okay? It's a lot of uncomfortable work. It's possible. It happens. I am no longer trauma bonded. It's, I can tell you from experience. I can tell you from watching other people experience and from helping people through this on a daily basis. It is possible. For some people, it's fast. For some people, it is excruciatingly slow. Everyone has their own timeline. Everyone has their reasons why they hang on and why this trauma bond is part of their either natural cycle or completely unnatural cycle, right? It depends on your life and the things you've experienced. So let's talk about some real re real ways to break these trauma bonds or at least start. Help, how to help, how to get yourself through this. This is something that many, many people reach out for help with, therapists or coaches. If you're gonna use a therapist or a coach, make sure they are minimally knowledgeable of trauma, understand trauma bonding, and, and do not talk to you in ways that make you feel invalidated. Okay, if that happens, it maybe isn't a good fit. It might be worth a conversation with them to see if you're understanding. And if they still continue to say, well, you know, your part is this. Bye. We're not here for that. We're trying to break these trauma bonds, right? Then we can talk about my part. So make sure that you have a fit that works for you, that is that feels safe. Sometimes it takes trial and error. Sometimes it takes talking to a few people. Sometimes it takes leaning on coaching while you're looking for a therapist or vice versa, depending on what helps you. Um, so there are places to help. This is one thing that the group coaching can help with because you don't have to necessarily talk a whole lot to gain a whole lot because other people are talking and sometimes just hearing the stories are so similar. The second thing I want to say here is live in the moment. When you are trauma bonded, you are in the past trying to throw it into the future constantly. You're reaching back saying, I want that. And you're trying to go, but I'll never have it into the future. I wish for, I wish they could treat me this way. Why? Blah, blah, blah. And then when they hoover, that brings it right into the present moment. Oh my gosh, my past, my future and my past are right here, right now in that person. And you reach to them. So living in the moment means being present to your everyday life, finding mindfulness practices so that you can learn to be present in your everyday life to your everyday life, being present to what you're doing to yourself even if what you're doing and yourself right now is painful, because this is not, this isn't something that you can go boom and turn off the trauma bond switch. This is something we feel our way through. We feel it to heal it, right? Okay. One step at a time. Don't put yourself on somebody else's timeline. Don't put yourself on your own timeline unless you need it. There are times when we need it. There's times when we have to say, okay, no more talk about a toxic person, period. I'm addicted to the talk. Because what can happen is you leave them and then you become addicted to talking about them or thinking about them. or And so you're no longer addicted to them. You're now addicted to your fantasy of them, 
to your memories and your you're like stuck in the in your own relationship with your trauma. So there is a time to to take the next step, which is stop that deliberately change our thoughts, right? Deliberately find other thought patterns to have. But for the beginning, it is literally one step at a time. And if you need to talk about it, then talk about it. If you need, it's it's knowing where you're at and where you're stuck, right? Okay, self-care only choices. We need to take care of ourselves when we are leaving toxic relationships. We need to be careful with ourselves. We need to be, when I say careful, I mean full of care. Okay. Full of care for yourself. It's very difficult when you've spent your life doing it for other people and not you. And when in fact you've sacrificed for other people, you've got to learn self-care. There's a lot of info out there about self-care. Um, I have a lot of videos about self-care. We'll do some more. We'll always talk about it. We talk about it in group a lot. Um, I'm always giving people tips uh, individually when I talk to them too. So because it's one of the most important things. And one way you can start that is loving self-talk. Catch yourself when you're mean to yourself and switch those words around. Stop using the words that toxic people used on you towards yourself. Stop gaslighting yourself. Stop devaluing yourself. Stop it. You have to. No one else can do that for you. Affirmations help. Um, Catching it, I think, is it, for me, is the most useful thing. Catching it when I'm getting hard on myself, when I'm getting down on myself, and just making myself say something different or neutral. Loving self talk can be neutral. Hey, yeah, you're having a rough time. That's pretty neutral. You know, hey, yeah, you're feeling pretty hard on yourself. Neutral, right? You don't have to go straight to, you are not the worst thing in the world. You're the most amazing thing in the world because you're not going to believe it. Maybe some people will, but I wouldn't. So you know what I mean? Like find self-talk that is neutral or loving instead of negative. Get those toxic people out of your head, okay? Feel all you need to feel and grieve it. Stop trying to bypass the grief, you guys. It's not possible. It'll hit you somewhere. It'll catch up with you. Grieve it. Talk it through. Nurture yourself take the weekend and curl up in a ball, whatever you need, you know, it, it prolongs things to push grief into self-blame, push grief into shaming yourself, push grief into people will, instead of grieving, they'll take the responsibility of everything and start to, you know what I'm saying, right? If you've done it. So, um, and grief is a process. Understand that you're grieving a lot here. You're grieving the loss of a relationship. You're grieving the loss of what you thought the relationship was. You're grieving the loss of the fake life the narcissist set up, the, the lies they've told. And you're grieving just for yourself. You lose yourself. There's a whole lot to grieve. It's okay. It's normal to grieve it. All right. Um, learn what att attracts you personally to that narcissist. What is it about you? And I don't mean what is it about you. What I mean is what is it about how you believe? What is it about the things you believe about yourself? What is it about the things you need that could be better met with something healthy or on your own? That you are going back to the narcissist. Are you afraid of being alone? Are you afraid you're never going to find someone? Are you afraid? Like whatever it is, it's okay. Don't judge it. Here's the thing. Judgment takes the place of grieving. Judgment takes the place of healing. Judgment, self-judgment isn't useful. Being discerning and judging so you know which choice to make is one thing. Judging yourself harshly isn't going to heal you. It's going to keep you trapped in the mindset of toxic people and the way they treated you. List the standards for how you will be treated from this point forward by everyone in your life. That's where you learn to create your boundaries. Start making lists of how you want to be treated and look at that and go, wait a minute, that person hoovering me can't meet two of these 10 requirements. And these are requirements, respect, kindness, truthfulness, transparency, whatever it is for you. And, and fill in the blanks. Don't just say respect. Talk about what that feels like, what that means. 
don't just say I want transparency between you know me and other people. Talk about what that really means in your for, for yourself. Write it out. When you know that, you can create boundaries quickly because you'll see it isn't happening, and you walk away. You go, nope, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, live your life. When you are trauma bonded, you're still, especially if you've left, you're still trying to rework this relationship in your head and see where you made the mistakes that you could have made it better. I'm here to tell you, you didn't do anything and you can't. Okay. Sure. When you're in a toxic relationship, you're not at your best. You're not being your best self because you can't be because you're in a toxic situation. If you are in any crisis situation, you're not acting the way you would normally act. You're acting in crisis, right? So if you're living in crisis, you're going to be in reaction. If you're living in a, in a being devalued, you're going to get defensive. You're going to get like all the things that happen. So no, that isn't perfect or whatever, right? That isn't great. But if you stay in your head ruminating on what you could have done differently and how you should have, you could have, you are not living your life right now. You're not going back to point number two, which was live in the moment. Be present to your life right now. Find things you like. Find things that interest you. Find a new path in your life. Make some new friends if you want. Um, get some new hobbies. Plan some vacations. Your life, not theirs. Not the one in the past, okay? And then find healthy connections. And that goes back to point one, which is sometimes healthy connections are your therapist or your coach for now. Sometimes that is all you can trust, okay? And that's okay for a little while. That hopefully that person is there to help you understand how to create healthy connections with other people in the world, right? That are not based on therapeutic relationship, that are based on friendship. I am Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com. If you like this channel, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up. If you need anything related to coaching or group coaching, check out the main description of every video. I can be reached there. I'm here to help you if you need it. I will see you guys next time. You have a fantastic day and take care. Bye-bye.